Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, you may recognize me from appearances on past webinars or a hamburger emoji in your chat. Uh, <laughs> I am Tareem uh, from Info, managing the CS customer success team. And I have with me Yoon. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Yoon. I'm a product manager here at Inflow, and Cookie, my cat, is also here today with us. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> Cookie is the main uh, presenter today. <laughs> but yeah, we always it always helps to have an animal in the webinars. I think you know, animals and babies. That's how yeah. we keep people interested. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Awesome. Okay, so I see there's about 19 people in here. Can you guys um, just Send us a hello on the chat bar. Just want to make sure you guys can see us and hear us okay. Um, we usually wait a little bit uh, for webinars to start, but today's a pretty interesting topic. So I'll get going as soon as I get the thumbs up that you guys can hear us and see us. And feel free to introduce yourselves as well, guys. Um, I think we're, we got, probably have some repeats, so say hello. Oh, we got a hello to Cookie. She's made it. <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're starting to get the hellos. Keep them coming. We will start because it is a bit of a fun topic. Fun topic. Uh, before, yeah, before I begin, I will just say today's topic. This is an impromptu webinar. So apologies if we do have some glitches along the way. Um, we did, I'm sure most of you know, release a new change, the biggest change we've ever released in Inflow, and it's the changing the way that the reordering happens. And we'll take you through what that looks like as well. Um, but we did want to throw this uh, webinar together because I know there are a lot of questions on what does this mean? How do I, what does this mean for my business? How do I, you know, resolve this? Because um, I know we we did um, change up some workflows in the wrong way for a few folks. So bear with us. It is quite a, um, a, it's a topic that if, depending on your workflow, you might have to do different things than what we're suggesting today. So as always, feel free to email us after support at inflowinventory.com. You can write the word webinar in the subject line if you'd like, uh, so we can go a bit more depth with everyone. But we'll try to get all the questions because um, we know this is a big topic. So we'll get going. Okay, so, so I will start with a little, Let's see. Okay, so I don't think this is full screen. I don't know how to get rid of this uh, sidebar here. That's okay. It, already, I was already showing you some glitches happening. Okay, so we're <laughs> just gonna keep it here because I'm afraid to go full screen and, and lose control of, of the sharing. But um, I think everyone can see the main screen here. Okay, so reordering changes 101. So first of all, why the change? Um, also, feel free to, if in the chat, if you're, if you kind of just signed up and you didn't know what what the topic was, because that totally happens, so we can kind of talk a little bit more. But essentially, what we're talking about is reordering. Um, so we call it reorder by location. This is a feature that was never available in Inflow before, and now it is. So basically, what the change was, as you can see here, is Inflow used to show you, you know, what to reorder, but it didn't tell you where uh, or how. So if your stock was needed in a specific location that you had set up, um, or if you should reorder it, um, you know, by you could transfer stock, you could order from a vendor, you could create a work order. So it didn't go into that detail. So it just said, hey, you got, you know, you need to buy 20 detergents, but if I have 17 stores across the state, it didn't tell me where uh, I need to order them. So that was kind of the big impetus for the change. So we can kind of have that flexibility, which for a lot of workflows um, is critical, right? You don't. I'll take you through some of that, but it's, it's quite critical. And it does work for, for um, it should be able to work for most people. We just need to show you how to transition, I guess, to the new system to make it work for you. So again, just a little bit more in terms of what the change is. Uh, now, pretty much what we're suggesting, pretty much in layman's terms, is to use your locations as, you know, physical like facilities, like a warehouse, a retail store, um, a state, whatever it may be. So it's an actual physical place. And your sub locations are the places within that facility that you store things. So it could be shelves, could be racks, could be aisles, bins, um, you know, front of house, back of house, that kind of stuff. 
So that's the transition that we, we're essentially needing people to, to move into for this new feature. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's pretty much the, the, big, the big deal here. A lot of people have been using this system, right? Some people will set up their locations when they start with Inflow exactly kind of as recommended here. But there are definitely a lot of people who use their locations in Inflow as sublocations. So for their locations, for example, currently you might have, you know, my shelf A, shelf B, shelf C as your location. So our recommendation is kind of move that level of detail over to the sublocation um, to make the, the new system work for you. So we'll go through kind of how that works. And just to bring it to life a little bit more, just to show you what we mean before the change, I'll take you through, you know, I have a bodega, some, some bodegas, and I sell, for example, detergent. So in this detergent, here's all my stock. I have a warehouse set up. These are all the um, aisles and racks in my warehouse. This is how I've named them. And I have 50 detergents here. My retail store, that's where I work, actually. These are all the my sub-locations in my retail store. But I have zero detergent left in stock. And NYC is my store in New York. I have 1,000 detergents. And these are all the different shelving um, in racks that I use. So before this change, essentially what would happen is Inflow would say, hey, you don't need to reorder because you have a lot of detergent. You have 1,000 here and 50. So you have 1,000 50 detergents, you don't need to order. But in reality, I mean, my retail store is zero and that's where I'm selling. So I kind of need to reorder. Uh, I really need to stock that. So before it would not tell you that, it would check all your locations, and they'll be like, listen, you're good to go. You've got a lot of stock. You don't need to reorder. But like I said, in reality, my retail store does need to be replenished. So that's kind of the after this, after this change. The intent of this change is that allow you that flexibility to do that. So now, you know, again, same scenario. Now what Inflow will do is tell you, hey, you can reorder for your retail store because it knows that I care about my retail store and it knows in my store I have zero. So for me, it's important to reorder. So Inflow will now say, hey, you need to reorder for your retail store. You're fine with your warehouse, you're fine with New York City, but for you in your retail store, you have to reorder. So that's the big change. And now Inflow will also let me say if I wanna reorder by purchasing from my suppliers or because I have so much in my warehouse in my New York City, I can also now just say, listen, I don't need to buy anymore. I have more than a thousand detergents in stock. I'm just gonna move over say 50 from New York City to my retail store. So now I have the flexibility to do that. So that's kind of the, the before and after in you know practical terms of what we're able to do now with the new feature so i'm just going to pause here i just wanted to give that preamble just to kind of bring it to life the, the what the change means and now we're kind of going to go over i guess the implications of that change if you haven't been set up this way and by this way i mean kind of referring back to this schematic right where you have your location as your physical places and your sublocations are your shelves and your racks I'd say a lot of people who have reached out with issues are those who have used their locations for everything. They don't use sublocations. So we're going to actually go through how we can make the transition over um, to this new system. So I'm just going to do a quick pause. Um, any questions before we begin? I'm not sure if any of this made sense. Okay. The silence is key. <laughs> feel free to, feel free to, feel free to ask any questions yeah. and, um like even along while while Tamim's presenting here um I will be monitoring the chat and we'll be responding to them um and if it's a if it's a particularly good question I guess we I'll interrupt me <laughs> yeah um, feel free to interrupt me yeah awesome okay so let me go back so I'll go back there's no questions yet again feel free um okay so I'm gonna start this is gonna be a little bit more uh, of a practical webinar, pretty much the steps. And we do have a video out that shows you how to make this transition. So we can link that in the chat as well. So we'll take you through a real life example. Um, let me just go back to the slides here. Okay, so now we're just gonna go through updating the new system. Um, sorry, I have my notes on another computer. So, okay, so updating the new system. So let's make that transition. So. I'm gonna go through this. I've li listed all the steps here in the presentation, but I'll actually go through it. But the first thing we wanna do is pretty much export all of our important information. So the two, two types of exports that I'm gonna do are reorder settings and the stock levels. 
So I'm actually going to just stop sharing. I'm going to take you directly live to Inflow. I'll just do that share. Okay. Okay. Actually, I'm going to share my entire screen to make it easier. So you're going to, it's going to look a little weird for a second. Okay. Can you guys see my info? Yeah. I'm going to say that. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So here's my info. You'll see, you know, I'm in the, this is my before state info. So you'll see again, I run a bodega convenience store. So I have a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I just want to show you the before. So um, I have a few different suppliers. I have my barcode set up. So you'll notice here my locations, you'll see, you know, just, just looking at it, you can tell that I've mixed my locations and sublocations together. That's how I've been using location. So I have my facility here. My warehouse is my main warehouse. Um, I have a storefront. That's another physical warehouse uh, location. And then you see I have B1A, A1A, C1A. These are the different racks and aisles within the warehouse that I use. So I'm the, the typical, I guess, info customer who may have been using locations as sublocations. So now we'll go through the process of separating them out. Um, so just so I can show you why this is wrong, and I just say wrong, not wrong, it just doesn't fit with the new system. Um, let's take an example quickly. I think should work here. So for example, detergent, you can see that I have detergent in the warehouse and in our shelf. So I'm just gonna open the detergent item. Perfect. So we have warehouse and shelf. I'm just gonna sell, create a sales order. Okay, so for, I'm just gonna, I'll show you defaults later, but say I say warehouse and I put in five, it's gonna show me low stock. But as you saw, actually it's 16. So, I mean, in reality, I do have enough stock. So this is, this is the implications of not having those locations and sublocations separated out. So once we do the transition, which I'll go through now, this will actually show, oh, actually you have, don't worry, you have stuff in stock and it'll tell you, you'll be able to see that, you know, I have a little bit in my warehouse and I also have a whole ton at B1A. Anyways, just wanted to kind of bring that to light for you. I'm going to get rid of that. So as I mentioned, to start, we're just going to export two of our files. So general, export data, I'm going to reorder settings. Just going to make sure I've saved it in the good location. We are setting CSV, perfect. So I'm going to export that. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to export my stock levels. Okay, here. Uh, make sure I just renamed it okay. Okay, so those are good. So to start, to start, what I'm gonna do essentially is zero out my stock levels. Uh, so it's, it's pretty much, I just, I've saved my stock levels because I did the export. So right now I just wanna make everything zero so that I can transition these items here, B1A, A1A, into the sublocation and then add the stock into those sublocations. So it'll look a little, it'll make more sense once we go through it. So to do this, I'm just going to open, let's see, I have a lot of files here. You get an inside look at my very messy desktop. Uh, okay, so webinar files. Okay, so I'm gonna open the stock levels. So, cause we're zero, zeroing out the stock rather. I'm just going to open that. Take a moment. Perfect. Okay. So this is everything I have now in my system. So you'll see, I, I'm not actually not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to change anything right now, actually. Um, I'm just going to zero the stock levels out. But one thing you can do, you know, if you have a list of a thousand items, Pretty much what you can do is highlight the top row, go to data and filter. And what you can do to, to make your life easier uh, is if there's any location that is going to stay. So for me, like I said, I've kind of only messed up half of my locations. Warehouse for me is going to actually be a location. It's my physical location. Storefront is an actual location. So those ones are right. I actually don't need to change those with this new system. So I'm going to delete this, delete them from this exercise just to make my life easier. So when you do the filter, you're actually able to see, okay, for me, I know warehouse I'm going to keep in storefront. Those are actually going to be the locations I want set up. So I'm going to press okay. And I'm just going to delete that data from here 
because I don't want to touch that. That's correct. That's actually going to be correct for the new system. So I'm just going to say delete row. Tie sheet row. Uh, I think that's, will that delete everything? We'll find out. No. Okay. So then I'm going to come back to location, select all, and there. So again, I've only just deleted the, the items that were in those correct locations. So I'm just going to save this and re-import it so I can zero out my stock. So again, always save as a CSV. And I'm just going to say zero out. Okay. Perfect. So now I'm going to go general, import. And again, I'm going to import stock levels. Let me just find my file, zero out, open, first row, it's checked off, next. So what's important here is that I'm actually going to say subtract it from existing inventory. Again, I just want to wipe that clean because I have to move all that information over. So I'm going to select subtract. This should already be mapped correctly, but give it a quick look. Looks good. So when I go to import, close, I'll get the email. And we should be able to see um, some of the changes here. So I'm just going to refresh. There you go. You can already see the changes. So you'll notice, again, because I deleted these ones, because, again, these are correct. Warehouse storefront, those are my locations. Those are still here. Warehouse, everything else has been deleted. And you'll see the location names have even been deleted. Um, because, yeah, we're getting rid of those. So that was step one. Zero out the incorrect inventory. Um, so now what we're going to do is actually make the transition so that we have sublocations because we don't have sublocations. So what I'm going to do first is change my settings quickly because I don't have sublocations on. You can tell because there's no sublocation um, data here. So to do that, you go up here to main menu, options, settings. And on the first page, you can see right here, track inventory by. So as you can see, I've just been using locations, but now I want to transition to, to the new way. So I'm going to break it down into sublocations. Okay. And then as well, I'm going to open up here anyway so I can see the data. And you'll see these are all the locations I had. I'm actually going to delete these ones because I'm moving them over to sublocations, right? Because this is what's messing me up, is because I have them here. So if I just actually I can like highlight a few and press delete. Oh, and those are gone. Um, and then while I'm here, I can also, since I'm here, I'm going to select a default. When you have a star, that means that this is the default. So um, inflow, we'll go through the order of defaults, but essentially inflow will say, okay, I know you use warehouse most of the time, so I'm going to sell, buy, pick, et cetera, from your warehouse. And you can change that, but it just makes it easier so you don't have to pick every time. So I'm going to change it because for me, the warehouse is where most of my items are, are stocked in this example. And just to show you, you know, all that, that list I deleted, don't worry, it's still there. They've just been inactive. So if you click here, they're still here. Again, we don't need them though. So I'm just going to hide them. So you're good to go. So save and close. Great. So we have sub locations ready. So I'm going to save and close this. And now basically what I'm going to do is actually pretty much change over my location to sub location. So you can see now I have the column sublocation. We've got to fill it in. So to do that, I'm just going to go back to the exact same file that I just uh, imported. And what I'm going to do, this is a bit of a cheat, because these are all still correct, right? I just want to be them sublocation. I'm going to rename this column into sublocation, turn this into location. Again, this is just to make it easier. And now I can actually fill in what I want as my location. So for me, like I said, I set up my warehouse and storefront. Those are the two locations I want. So I can choose what I, what I want um, to put where. So if I go warehouse, here's a small trick. If you have just one location, you can actually just put the, the name of that location here, double click that little plus sign, and it's going to fill them all in for you so you don't have to worry. Um, for the sake of presentation, I will change one of these to be stored in the storefront. So let's do my oat milk storefront and I just want to check how I spelt it because if I don't spell it the same it'll create a new location okay storefront one name storefront great so that's it that's all I've done that was an easy trick to swap the heading here 
and then type in what you want your location name to be. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna save it. Just so I can keep track, so location, save, perfect. I'm gonna come back to info. And this general, import data, again, stock levels, and location is the one. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep it here. I'm setting it to what's being imported. Um, so, you know, we took the stock out and now we're importing both the stock levels and the correct location information. So I'm gonna set levels. I'm gonna just take a quick scan here, but it looks good. So I'm just gonna do import and should be good to go. Okay, we're just gonna give it a quick refresh. There you go. So now you can see it's kind of all set up. So now I have my locations all sorted out, right? So I've got my storefronts and I have sub locations uh, for the ones that I had that information for. I have them all here. Um, and now the quantity is accurate. So for example, we'll go to detergent. Right, so detergent now, before you'll notice B1A was in this location, in this uh, column, but now it's separated. So now I have my warehouse, just my general warehouse, I have a location, and my warehouse in shelf B1A, I have 15. So now when I buy, when I sell, when I reorder, I can actually, what I'm gonna do is buy, sell, reorder for my one location for warehouse, and then it's up to me to choose if I wanna stop, where I wanna stock it within the warehouse. So that's how you do the switch over part. So that's that's kind of the, the step one of making your locations into sub-locations. So I'm just gonna take a quick pause to see um, if we have any questions on that first part. I'll go through buying and selling and setting your reorder settings after, but just that one part I wanna see. Um, I'm just gonna stop sharing for a second and see if we have any questions. Okay, any questions? So far, so good. I think uh, I think we have meant to link the video or something. Yes. Let me. You have to. I don't have the link handy, but I will look. <laughs> or do you, can, do you know the link? The link to the. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm trying to look for it right now. Yeah. Um. You. Okay, I, you no worries. The presentation. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll look for it. Perfect. Okay. So, any other questions out there? while I go on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is actually set up reorder settings for those of you who had those before. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so we're gonna update the reorder settings. So I'll actually just share with you the steps really quickly. Um, okay, still have a little MPF product. Okay, so we'll go through the next steps and let us know where your issues are arising. Uh, MPF products said they, they follow the steps for the solving some issues. So, so next, so next we're gonna update our reorder settings, right? So if you remember the one of the first uh, files I exported was reorder settings, but now we have new, oops, now we have new locations and sublocations. So now we have to kind of update those settings. So I'm just gonna do that with you now. So um, yeah, here are the steps, but I'll actually take you to the steps, which I think will be a little bit more useful. Um, uh, and we have a question from Jared. This doesn't work for inflow light. Oh, I suppose because you get, there's no sublocations, correct, for inflow light? Yes, that's right. So there's, um, for for inflow, for the light plan, there is no sublocations. So yeah, it, you would still be able to, to just set the one single location, unfortunately, but like um, the reorder points and everything would still work for you. Um, it's just you wouldn't have the benefit of of you know separating your your work area into uh, different different spaces. Yeah. Perfect. Um, awesome. Okay, and MPF product still has some issues because they use deactivate X location. Some of the inventory is still showing in the old ones. Okay. We might we might need to um, re oop, here there you go infinite loop. Uh, we we might need to reach out. Uh, separately just to see what's going on. Um, 
but yeah, we'll continue with this and let us know if any of this helps. If not, we'll we'll reach out and we'll do some one-on-one -on -one, um, troubleshooting there. So for reorder settings, uh, again, I'm just gonna go back. If you remember, like I said, the reorder settings file is what I actually exported. So I will, sorry, I'm sharing my entire screen so you get to see a lot. Okay, that's the wrong one. Okay, so reorder settings. Perfect, so you'll see that my reorder settings, I exported it first because I didn't wanna retype in my settings. You can totally redo them uh, You know, after you do the switch. You can create them from scratch if you'd like. Um, but for me, I had some already saved in. You'll see that this before I made the switch over, because you'll see my locations are wrong, I did have settings saved. So what I'm actually gonna do pretty much is swap this again, right? So this is gonna be, I'm just gonna copy this as default. This is now location. And I'm going to fill in the correct information just like I did before. Um, and for me, I think it was, oat milk was the storefront. Let me check what else was storefront. Oat milk and made good. Made good here, okay. Storefront, storefront. Perfect. Okay, so then you can see here, enable reordering, I had this true. That means I have set up these settings. And then here were my reorder points. Just for simplicity's sake, I put them all to 10. And I said pretty much which that, what that means is once I get at nine, once I get to nine um, SKUs of this product, prompt me to reorder. And you'll see that for some of these I have, don't tell me how much to reorder. And some of them might say, recommend a reorder 25. And pretty much what this will do then is when it prompts me to reorder, I can decide. I mean, you can still decide no matter what, you can always change the number before you place the purchase order. But for example, for me, maybe I know my detergent, my eye drops, like every time I order a different amount, depends on the season or, or whatnot. So I'm gonna keep this blank because every time I purchase, I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna change the amount I wanna purchase. But for example, for these other things, they're pretty steady. So I've put in 25 because every time I run out of stock, I'll just order 25 and it should be good to go. And then you'll notice this is a newer feature, um, reorder method. So like I said before, like I showed with a schematic, before you could only purchase with a purchase order. Now, if I wanted to, I could also purchase with a, create a by creating a work order or a stock transfer. So. If you saw my original um, location schematic, you know, I have a warehouse and I have a storefront. And when my storefront runs out of stuff, I don't actually wanna buy 25 from my supplier. I actually wanna do a stock transfer from my warehouse because my warehouse um, stocks all the, the products for me. So that's just an example. Um, I will put in here, I think it's transfer stock. What's the word? You do know the word transfer? Um, for the for the method, yeah, exactly. So check, but I believe it is okay. transfer. Um, oh, I have the sample file open. Give me a second here. No worry. Sorry, I put you on the spot. You order. That's <laughs> okay. Oops. So we have a we actually have a sample reorder settings file on our on our knowledge base. So it's it's stock transfer two words. Stock transfer. Okay. So I got it flipped. We'll put stock transfer. Great. So I'm just going to save this. Reorder settings. And just to show you as well, I'll, I'll actually change some of these. So let me just try with these because I know a lot of people say. Um, you know, when I get to zero, I want to be notified. So what Inflow does is it'll do once your stock is one below whatever you put here. So if you want to be notified exactly when you have zero, you can put one. I'm going to put one for a few of these. So this pretty much says once Inflow gets below one, so zero of this product, prompts me to the reorder. Um, and sometimes too, you can even do um, like negative stock, right? This is especially good for things that are expensive, right? I don't want to buy a whole bunch of stuff. So I only want to be notified when I'm out of it. Um, so we'll take you through an example of that. But I put a few here as one. 
I'm going to save. And I'm just going to re-import those reorder settings. So back to general, import, reorder settings, reorder settings updated. Here we go. Okay. Let's go to next. Okay, so most of this, I'm just going to do a quick look. Yes, product is what I had my thing called. Location, default sublocation, enable point quantity method. Perfect, looks good to go. So I'm just going to update that. Perfect. And I will uh, give an example just to show you how it's been updated. So we have eyedrops, let's go to eyedrops. And I think it should be updated. Okay, so now you'll see the eyedrops, you have two uh, locations set up. So this is what we just imported. And again, you'll see all the new location sublocation is all working. So edit locations. Um, and it will show you the last vendor. So I had these set up before. I don't know if you remember the other screen. I'll just show you before. All that information was here, right? Reorder point quantity last vendor. So you still have to click here, come into here, and click last vendor. Now you, from the main page, you can just say edit reorder settings. And then you can change your last vendor right from here. That's kind of an FYI. Um, otherwise, you can see that I, my default sublocation, so I'll just show you my Excel sheet because that's what I did. I drops A1A. My reorder point is one and my quantity is zero. So you'll see here, A1A, my reorder point is one, quantity is zero. So I have that all set up. Um, and just like I asked it, purchase order. So it'll tell me to, to purchase um, from that. So you'll see that my reordering is set up for my warehouse location. Again, there's some instances you might have more than one location set up, which you can do. Uh, I think my example here was Let's go to the stock transfer. Okay, made. Was it made good? Okay. So go to the made good product. You'll see I only have in the storefront. And I put here. My default sublocation is the storefront. And I want to do stock transfer. And I could have also put it, um, I could have put it here if I knew, right? If I put warehouse here, for example, and imported it, that's where it would have put here. It would have imported warehouse. I'll just put it here. Uh, but essentially, again, when you're at, when you're out of stock, it'll tell you, don't buy from a supplier. I'm just going to create a stock transfer so that your warehouse ships you out some more. So I'm going to press save. And because I, I've just created that example, I'm going to actually add warehouse to here and pretend that I have, you know, 500 so I can walk you through what that looks like. So in this example, because I set it up as a stock transfer, when I get low, it'll tell me to transfer from the warehouse. To my storefront. All right. So, um, so we had some some questions uh, um, from a bunch of people actually, but um, it, it is all stuff that we are going to be covering, sort of. Uh, I think in the next next little while. So I don't know if you want to go through that now or um, what do you think? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, yeah. Sure. What any. Um, so, anything? yeah, I, I think it might, I think it might make sense to maybe just keep going and I'll interrupt you. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, so I think yes. are we covering, what are we covering next? Uh, defaults, right? Yes, defaults. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll show you now, share, and I do see a few of the questions, so we will get to them. Okay, mm -hmm. let me turn screen. Okay, sorry for the infinite loop here. Okay, I think we should be seeing this. Okay, so setting defaults. So I don't know how familiar, if everyone is familiar with the uh, idea of defaults, it's always existed in Inflow. But again, kind of setting, um, you can set different defaults. So when you sell, for example, it pulls from a certain location. Or when you pick an item, it's picking from a certain location, um, things of that nature. So to set the default, uh, there is a hierarchy because you can't set a few different defaults. The biggest default is a customer default that trumps everything. So I'll show you, for example, if I'm just going to go to my customer list. I don't know if I have any customers. No. Okay. So we're going to create a new customer. Sorry, guys. This was all a new database. And my favorite customer of all time. Whoop. Okay, Michael Scott. Great. Awesome. Let's save. 
structure. And so, so you'll see here default locations. So here's, a, for example, a default you might set. I know Michael Scott always comes to my um, storefront. That's his store. He will never, if I'm creating an order for Michael Scott, it's going to be from there. So I don't want to have to pick that every time. So I'm just going to come in here and say, anytime Michael Scott, I create a purchase, or sorry, a sales order for Michael Scott, pull inventory from storefront. That's where I'm selling him from. So that's an example. That's, that's the one that trumps everything. Um, the next thing that you can do is set a personal default. So if you go to general, oh, sorry, options, personal settings. This is for you, your own login. Okay, so one company, you might have 10 logins. Me, I work at my retail store. So for me, it's important that I sell from the retail store. But maybe my boss is at the warehouse, and it's important that all their items, they control the warehouse inventory, right? It doesn't make sense for me to do anything with the hair warehouse, like I'm, I'm not there, I want everything sold from my store. So from the personal settings, you can actually set what location you'd like. So for me, I'm gonna put storefront. Save and close. And then another thing you can do is also set a general company setting. So this, this is the last precedent. <laughs> so if you go to normal settings, again, manage inventory locations, which is what we did. You just do the little star here. So that's the default. So those are the three major ways to set the default. Um, and that again, inflow will kind of dictate which way you want to pretty much sell. Um, another thing now that we've changed it a little bit, now that we've kind of moved over to this new system, there is a different way that you can also select your picking options. So sorry about that. So I'll just show you, if you log into the web app, appsinfluencetory.com, um, you can just come up here to account team. This is just a shortcut. You can also get here by going to the corner, left corner. But you'll see here, company settings, we do have this new option here, picking options. So when I click this, now I can kind of choose how I want Inflow to handle all this. So first of all, how do I want them to take stock? Um, you can do alphabetical order, because some people, right, you do put your locations and sublocations in a certain way that dictates the warehouse flow, for example. So it'll go um, in that flow. For me, I don't have my warehouse set up like that. So I'm just gonna say with the highest quantity. So if I have a, you know, my warehouse and I have my detergent on seven different shelves, I'm gonna ask, Inflow will tell me to go to the shelf with the most amount of quantity. That's where it's gonna tell me to pick from. That's how I want it to tell me. Um, and then the other thing you can do, again, written here, unless there's a customer personal default setting, for sales orders, what do you want your location field to set, be set up as? So for example, I'll just show you a, what, what I mean here. The sales order. So, okay, so I have Michael Scott. Because I have a customer setting, it's gonna be storefront automatically. But I'm going to just show you, for example, if I add a new one, just put retail, customer, add new. Yeah, that's because my storefront, sorry, my storefront is my personal setting. But this is essentially, that setting that I'm showing you now is pretty much dictating this. So if I didn't have a setting set up for retail customer, you can choose how you want Inflow to handle this. You can have it set to your company default location, or you can do it blank. So when you do it blank, you'll be able to pick from any location you want. Um, and it'll show you that. So it'll show you the differences, right? So if I keep it set to this, set to your company default location, I'm gonna save. So uh, my company default is actually warehouse, but because my personal default is storefront, it did this. So just for the sake of exercise, I'm going to take away my default, my personal setting. Okay. And I will create a new. So you'll see. So because I took away my personal settings, it's going to my default location, which I've set the system to be warehouse. Um, so I'm just going to say retail customer. And for the sake of this, let's choose a product that's in both the storefront and the warehouse. I believe, I forget, was it made good? It was made good, wasn't it? Okay, so made good. So I'm gonna sell my made good granola bars. 
okay? And you'll see that when I hover over it, it's telling me inventory for warehouse because that's the setting I chose. So I'm only gonna be able to see the warehouse inventory this way. So, so that's the information I see. So let me show you if I remove that. So if I pick and I set the other one where I say blank, and I save it, uh, you'll see I might have to do, let me create a new one. New one, yeah. Okay, mm. so if I do that again. So actually, oh, no, it's because, it's because you have, uh, I think you have a personal okay. control set, so it will override the blank. Um, oh, I guess not. No, I didn't set that, so I'm going to save. And let me just start a new one because this is discard. Like a new tab. Yeah. Okay. New sales order. Okay, maybe I can close this. Did you save it? Save it on the web. Let's check. Okay. So. Was, did the retail customer maybe have the, the default location set? Let's see. So um, just just really quickly, um, these default locations, these aren't new to Inflow. This has you know, always been been there. Um, and so well, I know it probably must seem new. It might be a pretty underutilized feature probably, but, um, but yeah, we decided to to, to help people make you more use of it, really. So let me check. Okay. That's a big. Okay. And just crossed. There we go. <laughs> okay. So there we go. I just had to reset. So because I chose that setting, and I'll just remind you what it was. The setting here, blank. When I create a sales order now, it won't fill this in. And here's the implications of that. That means when I have something across multiple locations like Made Good, all this informa information is across all my locations. So now you see before it was 400, now it's 504 because I do have it in my warehouse and my storefront. So that's the setting you wanna enable if you want to see everything across your locations. Now. It gets a little bit tricky because if you haven't done the transition that we just did in the step before, you know, so your locations are all your sub locations, um, then I can imagine it kind of being a bit of a headache that you can't see all of your items without turning on that setting. But if we're going to switch over to the system where, you know, let's keep our location as our facility and we'll move our shelves and racks to sub location, then you should be good. You sh most, a lot of workflows, not all of them, of course, a lot of workflows, you should be okay just to see the location in just the storefront, like the, the setting we had before. Um, because, you know, I only have one store, I only have one facility. So it will tell you all of the items. So it really just depends what system you're working with. So now you kind of have the ability to see how you want it presented. Um, again, the, the downfall of doing it this way is that this isn't filled in. That's not necessarily bad because you can I mean, anytime you can change it, right? As soon as I change it, let's see. Oh, I think I accidentally went to the actual product. Mm -hmm. So you'll see, as soon as I changed it, you'll see already, this is now just for warehouse. So just to recap, whatever you put in here is what will show up here for the, the availability. If you keep it blank, which you can now do automatically with a setting, you'll see it for all locations. Mm -hmm. um, so there's also another way to get to this little little pop-up here, like if you click into the quantity drop-down itself. Yeah, um, good call. So that's, yeah, so this right now it's quantity on hand, that's 504 across all locations, but if you switch that location up top um, and uh, if you click in there, it's it's 500. And then you can see we added the uh, global on hand. So from the screen it's, itself, you can also still see, you know, if you want to see if you have stock uh, in other locations. Um, so for, for those of you who, who prior to the update, if you were seeing, you know, um, 
a lot of red marks. Uh, so this is something Jared brought up, you know, whatever upgrade happened, uh, now it shows that, you know, uh, a red mark on the sales order when when you do have enough, uh, you know, in stock. Um, so basically that's what's happening here. Um, Inflow had set, we, we had set the, uh, the, the default location on the sales order and so, you know, it's it's telling you, okay, in this particular location, you don't have enough. Um, so if you if you don't if you don't want that, if you don't want to see that, uh, you know, if you prefer for your sales orders to be looking across uh, all all those locations, uh, then you just go ahead and change that setting in the web in the web app um, to have it set to blank. So I hope that answers your question, Jared. I think you maybe you had changed that. Um, I see. I see you say thanks just fixed it. So hopefully that's what you did. <laughs> um, but let me know if you're, if you're having problems. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, we can, we can keep going. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just complete the sales order just to show you. I have a location is um, blank. So I was able to see that I have 504. So I put three. So I'm just going to save. And then you'll see. Uh, I, Kind of depends. Um, so I'm going to add shipping here because I pick. I don't know if you all go through the picking process, but when you do go to the picking, even if you don't have shipping on, I'll just show you if you don't have shipping on, it just says fulfill, but it's the same screen. Uh, so if you press autofill, pretty much what it's telling me is to pick three of my made good from my warehouse. So it is choosing for me, where, tell me where to go. I don't have a sublocation set up. So maybe let me sell a product with a sub that I, that I set up a sublocation for. Perfect. Eye drops. We'll do another one. Eye drops, right? Cannot pick more than the order to mount. Quantity on hand. Let's see. Three. Warehouse. Okay, let me show this. Oh, sorry, I'm fulfilling because I'm on the wrong tab. Sorry, I'm trying to sell the eye drops. I'm gonna put eye drops here. And here I wanna sell, uh, you know, for example, just to show you, if I put four, it's gonna give me the red exclamation mark because I don't have four. I don't know if you guys saw that, not enough stock. And then when I click down, yeah, I don't because it says three and three. Okay, so I'm gonna sell two, press save. And now when I go to fulfill, I'm gonna again press auto fulfill. So it will tell me where to pick location from. And just, again, I only, for the sake of example, I'm gonna set up another location for my eye drops. So we'll do warehouse. And I'm gonna pick a B1B and I'll put five, save. And then I'm going to save this and create a new one just to show you. What happens now that I have that set up? So I drop. Uh, I'm gonna buy four. Actually, let's buy two. You can see it. I'm gonna press save. And when I press auto fulfill, you'll see where it takes it from. So it's it's prioritized the way I've asked it to prioritize. I said I believe my settings were. I'll just go back to the screen. So take from the default location if I have that set up. If I don't. Take it with the one with the highest quantity. So for me, just so you can see, my I actually have, this was my default. This is what I originally set up. Um, so I'll, I'll just show you that again. So you can see my default was A1A, A1A. So inflow took the inventory out of here first. Okay, save. Okay, so quick pause, everything, any other questions? I was just gonna show the implications on the stock screen. So I'll just take a quick pause. Um, yeah, so I, I had addressed uh, Jared's um, question from earlier about the, you know, all the red marks and the order location. So okay. what's so we'll next? Them. Are we going through? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go through um, just adjust count transfer. Okay. I think those the screens. questions will be on the reordering stock um, examples, so we can get to that and talk about it. Got it. Okay. 
Perfect. Okay, so I'll do this one pretty. This one's pretty, um, pretty straightforward. The entire screen. Okay, so just some implications of this new system on the ways you typically change stock. So adjust stock, count sheets, uh, transfer stock. So I'll just show you like an adjust stock, for example. So now you'll see that it's actually by location. So you have to choose location. Um, you, so you, you, you have to do it per location. So if I would have to do my own stock, um, adjust stock for storefront and warehouse. So in my storefront, let's see, I think I had some eye drops. Was it eye drops? Maybe. Uh, my, okay, so my old one is zero. I wanna add three, say, say I found three. Um, I can do that. So it is now, you'll see by location. So it'll only show your location stuff. So I can do a new one, so it changes, and do it by warehouse as well. And uh, typically you you could, most people probably scan this information in so that they're doing it live. Um, but for example, I'll show you, I have that popcorn and B112, my new quantity is, I'm gonna say five, or five, three, save. And I can do that for as many as I'd like. Um, there we go, et cetera. So again, so this is now by location. So you'll see that it separates them out. So uh, stock stock adjustment 21 was for my storefront and for 22 is my warehouse. So I'll also show you very similar idea of count sheet. Now we have this. So it is by location. Um, so again, by location. So it is showing me everything for the location. So it will create a different stock sheet uh, count sheet, sorry, for different locations. So I'll just show you another example. Oh, sorry. Um, just to let people know, um, so we will be introducing add items by sublocation in a near update. Um, it's it's to help people with you know really really big <laughs> uh, facilities and they want to do counts at a certain you know just a certain area at a time. Um, yeah, so hopefully, you know, look forward to the next update. Awesome. And you can see, like, I'm hoping you can see some of the benefits now that this is split up, right? Because if I'm, again, in the retail store before, you know, now now I can actually do a count sheet for my, my location, which is way more useful. Um, so it just separates it out, makes it a bit easier. Uh, and the same, again, all of the transfer systems, same idea. It's now a location-based activity, which makes sense, right? So transfer warehouse to storefront and add by, I press add by location. So this just showed me everything I have and what sub location. And um, yeah, so I can transfer as well. Okay. So I think the, the moment people have been waiting for reorder stock. Reorder stock, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'll go to the dashboard. I, I didn't know a lot of people use reorder from the dashboard, but you do. So just so you know, you can also do it from here, inventory and reorder stock. So I'll do it from here. So I have three products to reorder. So when I press reorder, there's a few different ways. This is like a main way that a lot of people do it. How, whenever you wanna go in and see what you need to reorder. Perfect. So now that I've ch changed everything over, I can choose what location I wanna reorder from again. For the sake of, sake of this example, I'm in the retail store, so I just want storefront stuff. So when I click here, you'll see there's a whole, now a whole kind of, kind of looks a little bit new. <laughs> it splits it out pretty much into the types of um, reorder. So I can, if I want, right now, I just want to email my vendors out. So I just click purchase order, and I'm going to go with that. Or I can say I'm going to do purchase order, and I want to request a stock transfer. So you can kind of choose what you want to do, right? Because sometimes you might just want to do one, the purchase orders, sometimes you might want to do the transfer, the work orders, et cetera. So also just to make it easier, you can also select all. So another thing from here is you can always click down to see things. Uh, we will probably change this so that you can see everything without having to click it. But um, you'll, I'm just gonna focus on purchase orders for the sake of simplicity here. 
But once I click down, you can see that it's going to actually organize it by the vendor. So it's going to create a purchase order for each vendor, right? That makes sense. Um, so if I was out of stock for more things that were Sam's Club, they show up here. And what you can see here is pretty typical to before. It just looks a bit different. So your current anticipated quantity is five. So that's what I have. I believe I have five in an open order um, or something like that. And my reorder point information is here. And this is, I set this. I don't know if you remember my import. I set it to be 25, so it's 25. I can change anything from here if I'd like. Boom, boom. Um, I can also click this. We're gonna change this so it's a bit more obvious. But if I wanna say, listen, uh, I don't, I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want to buy from Sam's Club because I'm already buying, well, just to show you, I'm already buying stuff from TO Supplies and I know they sell me old milk. I don't want to take two orders. I might as well change this to TO. So then it moves. You'll see now it's moved. So there's zero items for Sam's Club, but now there's two. So you can play around kind of with that as well if you'd like. Um, and then when you're ready, again, Oh, I'm sorry, before, oh no. <laughs> That's okay, we'll go back, we'll go back. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, Mark had a comment about the this screen itself, but yeah. Okay, I will go back to the screen just to show you, you press reorder and it's already done. If you'd like, you can go to the actual purchase order by clicking here. A lot of times we might have like 20 of them. Um, we are looking again to add the features so that you can open them all at once. Um, but for now, I'll just go to the one and it'll take me here. And it's just a bit slow, but I, I'll, there we go. All is, um, all is good. Mm -hmm. um, so I will go back. I don't know if I have anything left to reorder. So let me, I don't think I do. So you let have, me. Well, I think you have the stock transfer, which is, which is, right. which is still um, for, I think for Mark's question, it's still, yeah, or you okay. can have a different location maybe. Let's try warehouse. Okay, warehouse has some stuff. So if you expand it to the uh, to the items, um, um, and maybe check some of them off. Um, so Mark's question or Mark's comment here was the the big thing we lost was the ability to see current stock uh, when looking at the recommended oh. reorder list. Uh, Mark, do correct me if I'm wrong. I I believe this is the screen that you're referring to. Um, in so in the past, um, the the reorder stock window. Was was a table form with the item, um, you know, the the uh, the current anticipated quantity, which we do have here, the reorder point and the reorder quantity. So um, we let us know in the comments if you feel it would be it would be beneficial to show current stock in well current stock for this location and this item somewhere on here as well. Um, but we, I, I'm I'm not. In the past, we didn't actually show uh, current stock either. Um, what we have is current anticipated quantity, which we can. <clears throat> I, I know that 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 term itself sounds very, you know, long and complex. But <clears throat> that term that that quantity takes into account, you know, any open sales orders, so things that customers expect from you, anything in an open work order, and okay. anything incoming so if you have a purchase order or you know some, some already coming in to fill that stock then you shouldn't need to reorder it and that's that's all taken into account uh, under the current anticipated quantity i believe we have a definition on it somewhere on our website <laughs> um so yeah so just just let us know in the, in the comments if you have feedback about this uh, about the screen um but hopefully that that information should should still be useful to you yeah and, and i will reiterate we are re-looking at the screen design so definitely for sure for sure they tell us mm -hmm. tell us uh stuff. We're, we're actively working on that now Um, I think that was that was it for okay. uh, yeah. Um, okay, so that's also just to show you as well um, another way to order. This is something that's changed, um, and I'll show you why. I don't know what I'm out of stock. What was I out of stock? Was it um, was that Hershey's? Okay, so for example, I'm selling. I believe. Hmm, sure. 
Okay, we'll do the Hershey's. One pack, so there's seven packs. I'm just gonna pretend that we're out of stock, so I'm just gonna say eight packs. And you get the red exclamation mark before when you right click and you just reorder product. Now it's gonna pop up your reorder module screen. And I know we have had some people say, you know, they just want the PO to be opened. But the reason we did this was, um, you know, there were a lot of businesses that said, okay, if I'm ordering one more pack of popcorn, I might as well order um, whatever else I need from my popcorn supplier. So that's the intent of kind of popping you up to the screen. Again, no, if I just want to order my popcorn, fine, click it and press reorder. But um, like, actually, like, sorry, oh, sorry. To um, can you actually yeah. cancel out of this and save your sales order before you do this? So we actually, uh, if you try again now, I'm pretty sure Hers Hershey, Hershey's S'mores Kit should be pre-checked for you. So, oh, amazing. Okay. Yeah. This is warehouse. Yeah. So if you open, if you expand, yeah. So it should be automatically whatever that's on this order that needs awesome. to be ordered. Um. Yeah. So a little, little bit of a shortcut there. Um, cool. Yeah. And yeah. yeah so as, exactly as Tamim said, like if you're already ordering Hershey s'mores from Toronto Supplies and you have other stuff that are also out of stock, you you could just add them to your order from here. Um, and that's that's kind of what we, we were going for here. Yeah. So that's it. That's that's the um, the other piece I want to show you guys. So I'm just going to stop sharing really quickly just so we can go back to presentation mode. Um, yeah, and just um, see. Oh, I guess open questions. That's those those were kind of the changes. We are at the top of the hour, so it did go a bit over, but we're still here. If you guys want to ask questions, um, leave any feedback. Curious to know um, if anybody is still looking to move over to the new system. I think that should definitely help anybody out there who who saw not enough stock, even though they do have enough stock. Mm -hmm. um, I missed the question from Angie here. Um, Angie says we currently do not have reorder points or quantities for our materials. Um, yeah, I mean, let us know is if that's something like you you want some help with, or if you like, or do you know? your reorder points and quantities, or is that something you don't know and want help with, or you have them and you want help setting them up, just let us know. Um, we do have the recommended reorder point report uh, in Inflow. That's, um, that that helps you with, uh, it, it kind of takes a look at, you know, your, your past historical sales and you can add in, you know, an estimated safety stock inflow does some sort of calculation for you, does some sort of magic, and then, you know, gives you a, gives you a reorder point that you can use. Um, so that's maybe that's that's one way you can start if if you don't you know have uh, points for your um, for your products. The other thing is we, we had some we had some comments about the deactivated products showing up. Sorry about that. That is a bug currently. Um, if you if you get the low stock emails sent to you uh, every week or you know whenever you've set it in your settings. Um, that is currently showing inactive products. I do apologize for that. But with, when you go to click reorder from the email itself, um, it, it should not show any of the of the, the inactive products. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, we have some comments about, you know, preferring the old reorder system, being able to view the item directly from the list. Um, yeah, thanks. Thank, thank you for the feedback. Um, please, please keep them coming. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll try and, you know, We'll keep improving the product as always. Um, what else? And um, yeah, just curious. I know I think, is it Virgil I've seen before? Honestly, the old way was so much easier and better. Was there a specific thing that was easier and better? Was it just the, you know, like all oh, the reorder screen or the current stock or not having your location separated out by sublocations? Um, yeah, if there's anything specific too that you guys want to leave on the feedback, because yeah, the old system and then there's so many things that did change so knowing the ones that you know are really hurting the most would be really helpful mm. all of it okay <laughs> <laughs> we order just so and she says we order just in time and don't hold a lot of inventory oh okay so you don't so you don't want to set any reorder points that's actually fine um that is actually fine. Inflow will still. Um, I can actually go through an example. I think I had one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, you don't have to set any reorder points for your stuff. 
And if inflow detects that, you know, okay, you've you've got an open sales order for, I don't know, like 20, you've only got like 15 in stock or something, like inflow will bring that product up into the you need to reorder this screen just you know even though you don't have any reorder points set so so that's still fine like yeah to me more yeah here's an example i've got a great bodega but i also sell a dyson and that stuff's expensive so i buy it once somebody wants it so that's that's an example kind of once i get to zero um or not even when i get to zero when somebody places an order for it that's when i purchase it from my supplier because it is quite expensive so you can see here the dyson I have zero in stock. Um, and then let's just say someone comes in and I, let me just change this. Storefront makes more sense. I'm gonna save it. So again, oh, did I, I, I don't think I saved it. Oh, it's because I had zero. Um, okay, so say it's sell, create a sales order, dive in, and Michael Scott comes in, he's got the money for it and he wants to buy one. Okay, so I'm gonna press save. And then now I'll go back. So pretty much I sold it to him without the actual inventory. And I said, great, I'm gonna buy it and I'll ship, ship it your way, for example. So now I believe it should show up. And uh, is it storefront? I don't yeah, think so it's I think it might show up under that one product has unknown reorder settings thing. Oh, yes. There it is. Yes, I forgot about this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like you said, not everything has reorder settings. They'll still show up here. So once I click that warning, it'll show you all the ones that you don't have reorder settings for, but that you've promised um, somebody for. So, mm -hmm. so in this case, yeah, you you can actually just um, I believe you can just set it to reorder quantity one. So that means it always just orders like at least one of or how, of however many you need. But you can leave the reorder point at zero. Um, yeah, like it's and then you can just add complete and add to reorder. And uh, actually, I think you no sorry you you need to leave it as blank is the thing. Can you, yeah, no Definitely. for reorder point for reorder point. Oh, I don't yeah. think it's very blank. Uh, okay, well, we can we can look at that in a sec. Yeah, but from here, complete and add to reorder. You can also click that never reorder button, but yeah. So, and then it's oh. under unknown vendors because it, well, in, to, in order for Info to create the purchase order for you, it's got to know what vendor um, you're ordering from. As you know, if you try to save a purchase order without a vendor selected, it will error. So that's why we have that section called unknown vendors here. Um, so I've just chosen Amazon. Makes makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, you can reorder from there. So that that unknown reorder settings thing should only happen for the first time because Inflow doesn't know what to do with it. Um, but the next time this happens again, like when Tamim gets another sales order for Dyson, um, it it should come back up into the reorder screen under like you know probably Amazon if it's the last vendor that you bought from. So I know it seems like a lot more clicks than it needs to be, but that's that's only because Info doesn't know what to do with it from the very beginning. So yeah, yeah. So you'll see when I go back to the Dyson, it's it's all been set up. But because I went through that, and then I don't know if you noticed too, you did have the option to also never reorder, so you can just totally do it um, yourself. This one. Okay, I think that's all of the questions. Let me know if you like. I mean, just put a uh, put a comment in if, if I missed you. I think I got everything. And I believe there was um, MCP product that was have MPF. MPF. MPF product. Yeah. If, yeah. If you're still having issues, I know. I think you mentioned that um, you followed the steps, but some of your old locations were still showing. Um, we're still showing up and showing in stock. So let us know if this helped. If it if it didn't, please, yeah, uh, email us at support at inflowinventory.com. Put it here and we'll look at your specific database. And that's for anybody. If anybody needs help with any of this or there's seen something wonky, just let us know. Mm -hmm. cool. 
Unfortunately, Cookie has left her spot. Um, so she's <laughs> <going to> <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, I guess. Come here, come here. Lunch, lunch time for cookie. Yeah, well, nope. <laughs> Not for another eight hours. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so I think that's it for us. Um, do you guys have any more questions before we, we end this? Get them in now again, or you can email us. Um, thank you for joining. I know this was a bit of a last minute webinar. I will also mention, we do have a regularly scheduled webinar next Tuesday. We will send um, an email blast on Monday for that. And it's um, we're actually going to be changing things up. So it's actually going to be a super focused lightning webinar. So it'll be a bit shorter on a specific topic. And it's um, all about units of measure, I believe, uh, held by Daniela. So that, that will be coming next week. This was kind of the impromptu, a bit of impromptu. So thanks for, for joining and your patience. I know we don't have everything set up. Um, but yeah, that's it. It looks like there's nothing else left. So I guess we're going to sign off for now mm -hmm. and yeah hope to see you guys at the next one okay great thank you all so much all bye. right bye gang have a good one <laughs>